Phylum Plethyhelminthes. Today we shall learn salient features, classification, comparison among the classes, and parasitism life cycles at the end. In short, all you need to know we shall cover today. Let's kick together. Classification of Platyal Manthes. Platyal Manthes are divided into four classes. Turbellaria, Trematoda, Monogenia and Cestidia. Let's compare the basic features to get the basic idea of comparison among the classes. Turbellarians are aquatic and free living. They have external cilia on the body. They are predaceous mean they are predators. They have rhabdites, the special cells in the epidermis which secrete certain sticky substances which is used to protect them from predators or in the danger. They also possess protrusible proboscis like, just like the external pharynx. They also possess mucus glands which secrete mucus and are hermaphrodites. Hermaphrodites mean they both sexes are present in the same organism. Among the examples of turbellarians are Dugatia, Notoplana and Convoluta. Class Trematoda. All are parasitic and mostly endoparasites. They have hold fast devices to attach with the host or substrate. They possess both sexual and asexual reproduction in the life cycle. Life cycle completes in two or more hosts. Examples of trematodes include Aspidogaster, Cotylapsis, Schistostoma, and Fissiola hepatica. Class Monogenia. Mostly monogenians are ectoparasites of vertebrates. They have one life cycle in one host like fishes, frogs or squids. They have opisthapter organs. Examples include Dysocotyle, Gurodactylus and Polystoma. Class Cestidia. All are parasitic tapeworms. No digestive tract. Body is segmented and each segment of the body is termed as proglottid. Two subclasses Cestodaria and Eucestoda. True tapeworms belongs to Eucestoda. Examples include Amphilina, Tinea and Protosphalus. Now, you can note that Turbellarians are not parasites, but all the rest three classes, trematodes, monogenians, and cestidians, all are parasites. Let's have a look at the evolutionary perspective of all these four classes. When we draw a evolutionary tree, in the evolutionary history, we see that this phylum looks paraphyletic, that turbellarians are diverged initially and then the other groups is further diverged into two branches trematodes and then the alternative trematodes are further divided into two classes cestoids and monogenians so among evolutionary perspective this phylum platyelminthes is paraphyletic body structure of planaria transverse section of turbellaria planaria Outermost body covering is epidermis derived from ectoderm and is in direct contact with environment. Some cells are ciliated while other have microvilli. Below epidermis, there are two types of muscular tissues. Outer layer is made up of circular tissue while inner to it are strips of longitudinal tissue. These provide support and locomotion. Innermost layer in middle is gastrodermis which form digestive cavity. This cavity has single layer of cells. This layer secrete enzymes which help in digestion and also they help in absorption of digested food. Ventral side of body has glandular cells called rhabdites. They are rod like and secrete mucus around the body for protection when there is a danger. Also, there are present adhesive and releaser glands in the ventral side uh, which are used to attach and detach body from substrate through 
secretions. Similarly, on the ventral side of the gut, there are oviducts and sperm ducts, but on the dorsal side, testes are present. Similarly, the area between the epidermis and gastrodermis is parenchymal cells which are roughly distributed here and there. Similarly, on the lateral sides, parenchymal muscles are also present which hold the upper and below layer together. On the ventral side of the gastrodermis, nerve cord is also present which have certain ganglia and used in coordination. Regeneration, a very famous phenomena among the platyal monthies. Many turbularians possess remarkable regenerative power. They have undifferentiated cells called neoblasts. In this diagram, you may observe the three scenarios. In the first scenario, leftmost, if we discard the head of the planaria, it will develop two heads. Similarly, in the middle diagram, if we discard the head portion and the tail portion and keep only the middle one, then it will generate two heads on both sides. In the third scenario, if we cut whole body and the head also longitudinally, it will develop into this U-shaped structure with two heads. So that is the power of regeneration which is more than definitely healing of wounds. Information. Most turbularians has a free living microscopic larvae called as Muller's larvae. Flame cells. Another very famous characteristics of this phylum. For excretion, most of platy elementes have protonephridia. These organs are consisted of bunch of cilia projecting into a cup shaped mesh. In the diagram, you can see the movement. This movement of cilia produces flame-like look. When the fluid enters into the flame cell, it moves away from the cilia and these cilia propel the fluid so that the regulatory functions may be performed. When cilia beats in cup, they just look like a candle flame flickering in air. That's why these cells are called as flame cells. Other protonephridia have single flagellum, not cilia, and are called solenocytes. These structures collect material from inner body and are connected to larger tubules which open outside through a single pore. Parasites. Now let's discuss the life cycle of a liver fluke, Faciola hepatica. One of the most complex life cycles among all living organisms. Let's start with egg from adult Faciola hepatica. As the egg of Faciola hepatica reaches fresh water, its operculum opens and a ciliated larva called Miracidium become released freely in water. Larva swims here and there until a snail host is met. As snail is found, the Mercidium larva penetrates into it and loses its cilia and develops into a sporocyst. These sporocysts are bag-like and has embryonic cells to develop. In the snail, these sporocytes undergo asexual reproduction and produce hundreds of daughter sporocytes or redi. These redi have embryonic cells. Hundreds of embryonic cells after further division produce hundreds of carcarii. The phenomena is termed as polyembryony. Among these hundreds, only one or two would be able to proceed further in cycle. Carcarii larva has a digestive tract, sucker and tail to move. Carcarii leaves the snail and swim freely in water until they found their second host or final host which may be vertebrate, invertebrate or plant. When Kirkirii penetrate into final host, they insist and now called as meta -Kirkiria. When this host eats another intermediate host, the meta break the cyst and develop into adult which then lay eggs 
and the cycle repeats that's it for today if you have any question regarding pretty elementis do comment below thanks